welcome to the second episode of the Public Humanities Podcast with our guest speaker, Brian Yance. Welcome. So could you start us off with a brief introduction of yourself and your position here at Wittenberg University? Sure. Thanks, Gabrielle. Um, yes, my name is Brian Yance, and I am actually in my 17th year at, at Wittenberg University. I've spent most of my time at Wittenberg as a um, member of the of the education department here, and uh, most recently for the past five years serving as the department chair of the education department. But this year, I have the honor to serve as the university provost, and um, the university provost is the individual that oversees and leads the academic side of the institution, um, both the curriculum and the faculty and other academic policies. So how does your position interact here with the humanities? You know, as I you know, stated earlier, I, I get a kind of bird's eye view of the entire curriculum and the entire academic program. And that includes majors and minors and interdisciplinary work and, um, you know, different disciplines and things like that. And so um, one of the things that makes um, Wittenberg distinct, I think, is a, um, you know, a long, long history in the humanities. Um, you know, I mean, I think that if you talk to anybody that's been around here much longer than I, you know, those folks that have been here um, 25, 30, 35 years, um, you know, the humanities have a long, strong heritage and history at Wittenberg. And so, you know, I get the opportunity, at least this year as the university provost to, you know, to think about how um, the humanities fits within our overall curriculum. Um, you know, how, how students are drawn to something um, that makes us distinctly human, um, which is, I think, is, is what the humanities um, does. And, you know, the other thing is that, you know, I, I get to work with colleagues that um, identify as humanists and, you know, teach, um, research, write, um, advise students in um, in this kind of broad discipline that I think, again, um, Wittenberg has a long, um, strong history in. What role do you see the humanities holding within our community here in Springfield? You know, I think that that's, um, Gabrielle, I think that's something that the Aramarth Institute has, um, as it's launched this year, um, has done a beautiful job, is to be a f public-facing um, component of the Wittenberg community for the Springfield community and showcasing um, the talent, um, showcasing the deep thought of, um, of our humanist faculty um, and, and, and our students. And, you know, you know kind of being a, um, a well, a, um, you know, a place where the Springfield community can come and drink from, um, you know, drink in a way of just being replenished um, on, you know, in, 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 in areas that are, um, you know, legitimately beautiful and help us think and help us solve problems and help us understand, again, what makes us distinctly human. Um, you know, we are a different being than any other living thing. And I think that, you know, we need um, opportunities to engage, um, you know, with the humanities to really bring to light um, those things that um, make us different than any other living being. So lastly, how can we increase the humanities presence within our community? You know, I think that, um, you know, the humanities, you know, have been under assault nationwide um, in the world of higher education. Uh, you know, I think that there's no doubt that um, fewer students are um, selecting um, majors in the humanities. I mean, the data to me is very clear with that. Um, but I, um, I, I, I will not for one instant believe that students, um, high school students, that um, community members have any less love or any less talent in the humanities. And so I think that it's a um, opportunity for those of us that care deeply about the humanities to think about how we message it, um, to think about how we package it, to think about how we collaborate um, with other entities um, on this campus on, and, and outside this campus. I mean, I know that, you know, there's work right now 
on our campus around a health humanities program, you know, a, a, a health humanities minor in the sense of like, you know, I mean, you can't pick up any sort of higher education um, publication today without some mention of allied health professions being a hot field and, you know, pe- you know public health being a, you know, a you know, major focus um, for our society coming out of a pandemic. Well, you know, I mean, that again, those, those are the things that you're going to read in publications. But blending that with, um, again, things that make us distinctly human, um, I think is the opportunity that, um, you know, Wittenberg should be focused on. I think it's something that the Airmarth Institute, um, you know, has potential to do really, really well. And I, you know, and I use this term a lot, but I think, I think we can win um, with the humanities. Um, I think that, you know, we've hired... Um, you know, some great faculty members in the past, you know, couple of years in, you know, some of our humanities um, departments and disciplines that, you know, I think we need to, we need to support and, you know, perhaps more importantly, let loose and, you know, for them to do their thing and to do the things that they do really, really well. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure having you on as our guest speaker. Thank you, and I, I really appreciate all the work you're doing. I think that this is, again, things that really matter um, and that, that are you know, absolutely critical for um, Wittenberg and for Wittenberg to truly be thriving as a, as a place that um, is about people and is about the human experience. And so um, you know, I, can't, I can't thank you enough for um, the good attention you're putting towards this, Gabrielle. Thank you. Thank you.